Welcome back to Not Quite Therapy. Today we have a reading from Beyond the Tempest Gate by author Jeff Suek. Okay, I'm going to read part one. The Tempest Gate was visible on the horizon long long before Gabriel sailed into Black Black Vortex churning over the sea like newly erupted volcanic ash. For 500 years, sailors had been changing course at the very site of that unholy deluge. But Gabriel, holy knight of the Church of the Arabian, made it straight for its very heart. He had come to destroy the demon Elysia sleeping within its elemental walls, and he would complete his quest or die trying. The roar of the gate enveloped him in as he drew near, rain cascading from the sky and pounding into the sea with the thunderous in like thousands of war horses charging over a battlefield. The sound rattled his teeth and sent a bolt of panic running through his spine. But beating down hard against his fear, the young man held steady to his course. He had no right to cowardice. His mission was to world of the evil that was the lead of the choir of storm. The first wind splintered his mast and sent the sail fluttering into the water like a ruined kite. Darkness enveloped as if he had been struck blind, able to make out the raging insane seascape around him, only in periodic flashes and bursts of lightning. Waves crashed and exploded against each other, splitting the air with the blasts of their impact. Gabriel picked up the oars from the hull of the boat and rowed, whipped back and forth several times nearly capsized. The knight quickly lost sense of what direction he was headed. He was simply fighting a state of float, balancing a little vessel against the ocean's malevolent will. Gabriel laughed. All of his 25 years of life had been building towards that moment. Countless hours of training, sacrifice, and prayer had all been spent in preparation for the battle that lie ahead. He shouted at the sky, It will take more than a warm breeze and some mist to turn me back. As if in response to his impudence, the winds raged harder. The rain turned to hail, and a towering form rose in the distance, its silhouette impressed upon the curtains of precipitation and a lightning burst of illumination. Gabriel at first thought a mountain had come within view, but then the lightning cracked and revealed the black shape in its entirety. It was no mountain. It was a wave, and it was moving his way. The knight pulled the oar. The oars inside the boat gripped the sides and held on. The impact smashed the ship to splinters and sent him flying into the ocean. He recovered from the shock to find himself sinking like a stone into the soundless underwater darkness, his body growing numb and unresponsive to the frigid cold. Unable to discern direction in the lightless depths, swam against the sinking feeling, hoping he moved upwards. He kicked off his boots and shed his skin to rid himself of their weight. The sword sheath in his belt was heaviest of all, of course but he would drown before he gave that up. And if it became lost, he would die chasing into the death. It was the sword of Dunravian, and he was nothing if not its arm. The breath he'd taken was quickly used up. His diaphragm strained and heaved. Hypoxia lights floated before his eyes as he clawed at the water like a falling climber grasping for a handle, lungs ready to explode as he fought his body's reflexive attempts to take a fatal breath of air that was not there. Gagging on nothing, mind fuzzy and spinning. He did not know if he was moving closer to the surface, but there was no other choice. Don't let me fail now, Dunraven, he prayed. Now when I'm so close to fulfilling the purpose you created me for. Is that about how long? That's fine. You can read out however long you want. Okay, I will continue. Okay. It seemed that his prayer would go unanswered and he would drown alone in the frigid darkness, but just before he lost control of his lungs, he broke through the ocean's surface. 
It took three full breaths to clear his mind enough to grasp the fact that he, he was no longer submerged. His relief was fleeting, for he quickly realized that his situation was not in the group. Waves pummeled him on every side. Torrents of rain splashed off the ocean's roiling surface so that he choked on water every time he breathed. His muscles were fatiguing, and the numbness created by the cold continued to spread. He could not swim forever. A flash of lightning illuminated something bobbing in the water. Lunging for the object, Gabriel thrashed about in the darkness trying to find it. To his amazement, he found himself grasping hold of a section of the ship's shattered mast pole. Clutching the spar close to his chest, he rested his head upon it. Thank you, Dunravian, he whispered. Thank you. Floating atop his makeshift raft, the knight scanned the horizon for some indication of the direction he needed to head towards. There was no room for error in the next move he made. His energy was almost entirely spent. Exhaustion and cold would soon overtake him. If he made it, it would not be an opportunity for another. A glimpse of light appeared in the distance. It was there only for a moment, and it disappeared just as quickly behind the rollicking waves. It was gone so fast that Gabriel was not certain he had seen it at all. But with no other choices left to him, he headed in the direction of... He did not know how long he swam. There was no sun to mark time and no landscape features to gauge distance. He only knew that after what felt like a very, very long time, he still had not located either leg. His legs began to fail him. He willed him into motion, into motion, but they did not at all. Pedaling uselessly in place while waves carried him about like driftwood, Gabriel has. He did not fear death. He only feared failure in his quest. If he had to die, he prayed that it was not a bear in the water. In battle, was a easier. The ocean swelled beneath him. The waves swept him up and sent him surging through the hail. It seemed closer than before, though how close he could not be sure. The wave broke. Holding the spar close to him, the knight prepared for impact. The force of the crashing wave sent him shooting and spinning into the cold depths. He reached out to catch the spar as a rip was ripped from his arms, but was not quick enough. As he watched the wood disappear into the nebulous depth, it occurred to him that he could see again. He stopped, stopped swimming and looked around in mute wonder. No longer cast in darkness, a faint light now permeated the water all around him. Not the flashing radiance of lightning, but instead a persistent glow. He searched around for the source of the light when a powerful current caught him, twisted him about, and smashed his head against something hard. There was a cr crunching sound. A brilliant explosion of pain, and then he fell into a different kind of darkness altogether. That's, That's good. It. That's a good place to leave it. Okay, so I'm going to stop that.